Hi, I'm Captain Knight. I apologize in advance for the uh, first part of this video. It's going to be a little bit out of focus. Uh, I shot it on my uh, Nikon D90 and it's about 12 years old. It would do video, but I did not know it would not auto track with the focus. So you guys bear with me on that. Uh, and we're going to see how this video turns out. Thank you. Enough of the silent treatment. I hope that's not too uh, convoluted, referring to the first part of this video where it shows you uh, where I took the cedar log and the first couple of cuts are no good. They're no good for anything. Usually most people throw them away. Uh, but uh, the one that I used was a rather green, it had a cedar log, it hadn't been cut but a month or so. So it was wet and I used it because it was the only full log that I had ready to go. So this is the piece that I got out of it and really, really pleased with it. I originally had planned to use this side because it was, had a lot of red in it and as I got to sanding I noticed all this pretty flame, I guess you call it, if it was in maple it would be flame maple. Uh, and uh, it's just good enough, goes up through here. This is nothing but sapwood. But still, before you go to sanding on it and planing on it, it just looks like a piece of junky cedar. I call them laps, but there's something else when they come off of the sawmill. So I have to admit that I did this one for the video. And uh, there's a distinct possibility it will crack. Uh, Greenwood, that's the problem when you get it 
best thing to do is stack it somewhere and let it dry. And, uh, you know, people give you some of the, these scrap pieces that are, say, an inch thick, two inches thick, whatever. Set them and let them dry. The cracks will appear, and then you can cut around the cracks. Okay, you can just eliminate them when it's dry, and you won't have a problem. But, uh, real pleased with this. For this stage, you could do any number of things. You can seal it with some uh, uh, wood sealer, uh, sanding sealer, sand it some more. Uh, or you can just set it on down to like I said, about 400, 350, 400. Coat it with vegetable oil, which is what I normally do, and I'll show you one that I've done that way. Vegetable oil is a, a great finish because it's, all you have to do is put more vegetable oil on it when you get ready to, to renew it. Uh, but that one is, is the cedar, and I sell a lot of, well, sell a lot of cedar. I do a lot of cedar here. Uh, but let me explain about the cracks, okay? That's what I'm talking about. See the cracks develop right here, and I've been filling this one with resin. And then I'll plant it down some more, and it will be another little, I call them hoochie coochie boards because I can't hardly say cartoochery, whatever. I can't say it. Half the time I mispronounce it. So I call them hoochie coochie boards. Uh, make them out of anything. You can make them out of wood, you can make them out of. Uh, Tabletop material they used to have in the 70s. The uh, I'm having a hard time remembering that too, but uh, you can you can make them out of anything. But wood is what I prefer. This is a piece of walnut, and I played with using a decal, but I don't like the way the decal discolors around here. But I haven't quit working on it yet. I'll try to come up with another finish and make that decal a little bit more acceptable. The back, you have the choice of putting these little feet on them or not. One of the reasons you might would like to put the feet on them is because if you do a charcuterie board like this with these uh, door handles and they're just repurposed door handles. I collect door handles up everywhere off of drawers and you know off of things like this. And I never throw them away. The fact is these right here came off of a, of a set of cabinets that I redid you know, 10 years ago, and I just kept them, and they worked a really great uh, option to one with a hole that you can pick up and hang. But if you do these, you've got to either reset a countersink the screws, or you've got to use the uh, the little pads, and the little pads will get it up off the off of the finish, and you don't have to countersink. Whatever you want to do. Uh, this one has not been finished. It's just a piece of plank. As you can see, it's got rough on both edges. People like that. Just sand them off real smooth, finish them up. They're fine. They're good to go. That is a piece of elm, I think. I'm not real sure, but it's elm. Might be oak. It's probably elm. And uh, this one was oak. And uh, let's see. Here is one that I just refinished with, and this is oak, by the way. This is where the, the, the crotch was, where it went this way on the tree. And uh, it come out really great. That is nothing but vegetable. You can use vegetable, you can use uh, lacquer, you can use polyurethane, you can use resin and just pour the resin like you would a tabletop. I've done that. And it's just a little bit more expensive. And I'm trying to keep this down and dirty. But see, that has a little bit of resin in it. Anywhere there's a hole, you just put resin. And there, it could be any kind of resin. You can take the JB Well stuff. It's clear. As long as it, well, you can do it. It's not clear. It doesn't have to be clear. Uh, but you can use this. It's some amazing. I've got a half a dozen different types left over from the video i done on epoxies and resins. You just add a little bit of, of a mica to them, any kind of mica, it doesn't matter. You just put a little bit in it, stir it up while you're mixing it, see what it looks like, add, or next time don't put as much, whatever you want to do on that. Uh, but uh, that's all there is to it. These things are super, super, super simple. So simple that if you don't have any kind of, you don't have a planer, you don't have a saw, you can't get to anybody who has a lumber saw, go down to the big box store. 
I use some shelving wood. This is a unique piece of shelving, but it's shelving. It come off, it's come out of off the shelving. I had to pick through it. Look at all that bird's eye on that. That is nothing but a one by 12, that's all that is. And it will make a really great hoochie coochie board. I'll round the edges, and route it and all that kind of stuff, and that's it. You can make them out of plywood. It doesn't matter. Sand them down good and finish them however you want. But I hope this helps. Like I said, there's a million videos out there on how to do this. Everybody's doing it. I do it because I can't throw anything away. When I have a scrap piece of wood, it's going to become something. So there you go, folks. That is my video on charcuterie boards, hoochie-coochie boards, whatever you want to call them. And like I said, everybody's doing them. So that's my video. I'm Captain Mike, and I'm out of here.